Uh, I think my screen is changing. Is this, is this changing or it's fine? Can you see the slides changing? Yes, doctor, we can. Sure, okay. First of all, radiation oncology is the branch of uh, oncology uh, that is uh, cancers, dealing with uh, treating cancers using high energy radiations like uh, protons, photons, electrons, high energy X-rays, or even higher particles. So this has been evolved from a long ago when Madam Curie has started her uh, experiments with radium. And then it turned out from radium or the radioactive substances to the electricity-based generation of the uh, ions uh, through which we can treat nowadays and which are more safer and does not uh, create any leakage of radiation. So in brief, radiation therapy can be divided into teletherapy, stereotactic radiotherapy and brachytherapy. Teletherapy is a branch which deals with uh, giving radiation from a distance uh, from the part we are treating. For example, if the body, uh, sim uh, similar to CT scan, the patient will be lying on the coach and from a distance, the radiation beam will be coming and directly entering into the body. That is called teletherapy. Stereotactic radiotherapy is a sub-branch evolved from teletherapy and it deals with high energy and focused radiation to a limited uh, area. Uh, this can be ablative or it can be considered as a radio surgery also. And the other branch is the brachytherapy. Here we use uh, radioactive substances to be inserted into the vicinity of the tumor that is inside the body. That means it is in touch with the body. And so it is called a local uh, radiation therapy or it's a short distance, there's a brachytherapy. Teletherapy is again divided into uh, various things based on the techniques we have been uh, used through the evolving ages. There are 3D CRT, IMRT, IGRT, and adaptive radiation therapy. These we will discuss uh, a, a bit uh, later. So these are called conformal radiotherapy techniques. And the stereotactic radiotherapy again has been divided based on the type of machine we are using, like a gamma knife and the linac based SRS and cyber knife. Brachytherapy uh, emerged with uh, assistance from CT guidance and MRI guidance that is called as image assisted brachytherapy. And the other thing is the electronic brachytherapy. So as we discussed, it is the use of high energy radiation from X-rays and other energy rays to kill the cancer cells and also to shrink the tumors. It can be used from machines outside the body or from the radioactive materials. And also there is something called systemic radiotherapy, which is using radioactive substances like radio uh, labeled monoclonal antibodies, also high energy heavy particles that can travel through the bloodstream throughout the body and can cause irradiation in a particular area. These are emerging with the combination with the nuclear medicine. Also we call as theranostics and uh, yeah, that is beyond the scope. If you want, I can discuss later. So where do we use radiation? Uh, basically, it is used uh, in almost 60 to 70 percent of the cancers nowadays, and it is uh, based on the way you are delivering and the objective or the intent. It is divided as adjuvant, which is called post-operative. Generally, after surgery, there can be still microscopic cells uh, surrounding the area of surgery, which we can't see and remove. So for that to get the cure, we always give uh, post-operative radiotherapy. And so that is called as adjuvant. And it decreases the local original recurrence after surgery. And sometimes we can use a concurrent chemotherapy, even for high risk cases. So uh, that will be more effective and enhances the radiation. And the main thing is the definitive radiation. Definitive radiation is done to preserve the organs. And that's why the organ preservation era started, especially with the treatment of vocal cords without being removed. And so generally in the locally advanced cases, uh, most of the times, uh, most of the sites will prefer radiation, sometimes along with chemotherapy. That is called com combination or concurrent chemo radiation. Early stages, if the tumor is removable, we go for surgery. As the tumor advances and the critical structures becoming involved, we can remove them. So that, that is where the role of organ preservation comes and we do definitive radiotherapy, plus or minus concurrent chemotherapy. So generally stage one, stage two, we call early and stage three, stage four, we call locally advanced. And if it is metastatic and uh, it is diffused throughout the body, uh, there is no role of surgery or radiation because we can give the whole body radiation with such a high dose or we can't do surgery all over the body. So there the 
role of chemotherapy comes, but as a palliative, that is uh, like uh, to control or to manage, but not to cure. In other situations, role of radiation is very important when uh, there is a diffuse uh, uh, spread of the disease and where we need palliation, that is there might be some severe pain in a bone or there might be a, a severe bleeding in some areas, like if you have uh, um, at, uh, advanced stage of uh, lung where the patient has breathing problem as the tumor is obstructing. There also you want to shrink the tumor to a certain extent and to cause uh, decrease the breathing difficulty or such areas where we need a palliation. That means we want to prevent some symptom being aggravated or causing difficulty. There we can use radiation in excellent way. Uh, it can be done in a single session or five sessions or 10 sessions based on the need. So coming to the development of radiation, how it started with initial uh, development of radiation, radioactive materials, and then linear accelerators have been developed. And before that, uh, MLCs, that is multi-leaf collimators. These are small leaf-like structures like this. They can interdigitate with, within them and uh, they can shape the beam that is coming out of a uh, box-shaped source. So these have changed tremendously the way we can treat the radius, uh, uh, areas of treatment. Like if you are treating head and neck, you don't want to treat everything in a box. You maybe wanted to save critical structures like the larynx or a trachea or something. Or if you are treating head and neck, you want to save the parotids. So you want to gen, uh, you don't want to give a complete whole level of radiation. You want to shape the beams. So for this, these MLCs have been uh, in a wonderful help. And this is what we call conformal field shaping. So this is how it started initially. Then computers came in and the algorithmic uh, planning of uh, radiation has been started using the computers where to spare the normal tissues and to decrease the dose to normal tissues. We give some constraints to the machine and it tries to match in number of ways finally to achieve it through which angle the beam has to go, how much weight of the radiation should go from which angle so that our dose constraints are achieved and that tumor is properly targeted with the required dose. So this is how conformal radiotherapy evolved and it is the technique that aims to exploit the potential biological improvements consequent on better spatial localization as I said before of the high dose irradiation volume. So everything comes with some set of problems and nothing is ideal. So as you can see here in the graph, uh, this is generally uh, what we are using nowadays, the photons. Photons have become the standard now. Uh, as you can see, the initial dose as it gets into the body, the absorption dose increases and slowly uh, the level of uh, dissipation of radiation at each point keeps decreasing. So if you have tumor, that is at this level and the photons have been not weighted properly, they may go down and there may be underdosing of the some of the tumor. So, and also it won't stop there. The moment it enters the body, it has to leave the body through some other way. So there, there will be an entrance dose, there, are, there will also be an exit dose. And also the more the distance, the lesser the potential or the intensity of the uh, energy radiation that is deposited in place that just follows the inverse square law. So uh, as it evolved, there are uh, uh, types of beam shaping and also modulation of the uh, intensity. That means uh, radiation comes influences that uh, as the beam comes down, each area or density of the particular part of the beam is called fluence. So people started uh, uh, researching on this and they started um, developing techniques to change the fluence or change the shape of the uh, outcoming beam to precisely target the tumors. So these are two types generally uh, we see. The first is a geometrical shaping and the second is the uh, fluence shaping by IMR. That means you can see the grids. Some areas have higher energies, some areas have lower energies. So in this way, heterogeneously, it can hit some areas with higher energy, the other areas with lower energy. Thereby, if some normal tissue is coming into the area, that may be uh, mapped for a lower radiation. So actually intensity modulation is a misnomer, it's actually the fluence that what I am talking right now about the density of the 
amount of radiation in particular uh, grid of the radiation beam. So this can be modulated using the uh, IMRD technique, that is intensity modular radiation techniques. So in this, most of the times we use the step and shoot IMRT. This is nothing but the linear accelerator, which you observe, it keeps on rotating around the uh, part of uh, treatment. So every, uh, there will be five to seven beams planned. So it will stop at certain angle. It will deliver a beam. Again, it stops or the closes the beam. Again, it uh, rotates to some other angle. Again, it delivers. This is called step and shoot. So it is actually easier to deliver using this and has become more popular. But the problem is it is more time consuming. So it has to uh, close and on and off. Every time it has to change angle, release the beam, close it and go. So there will be time consuming. But during that rotation, the beam will be interrupted. That means it is closed. So there won't be much leakage of radiation uh, into the surroundings or into the organs which are not needed to plant. Coming to dynamic RT, this is like uh, there is no step and shoot in this. Uh, there will be continuously uh, changing MLCs in uh, which shape the beam continuously as the linear, uh, linear accelerator rotates surrounding the body. So it is generally faster than the IMRT. It is smoother and the modulation is achieved by continuous changes. And But the problem is beam remains continuously open. So there can be more leakage considered to step and shoot. So what are the challenges with this? Significantly increased expenditure because the machine should have the treatment capability and also the imaging equipment that is required for planning and also verification of this uh, high conformity uh, is more expensive and also the software and computer hardware are required. Extensive physics manpower is required and also it is time consuming. It is highly susceptible to motion and setup related errors. Like uh, sometimes you may see uh, lungs, the tumor may be moving along with your respiration. So if you plan highly conformal without giving much margins, there will be always a chance of geographical miss. Target delineation, and this is uh, really uh, what I was talking about. Uh, it, it becomes problematic as because we have to uh, create that plan as per the gross tumor which we are seeing and also possible microscopic tumor and uh, as you are not giving wider area with the box you have to shape it accordingly and also give margins for preventing these machine errors and also there is something called radiobiological disadvantage here decrease dose rate to the tumor sometimes this may happen if uh, the plan does not uh, cover the tumor completely and also there is a problem with increased integral dose. This means you are giving radiation from different angles. So different areas of the body keeps on getting radiation. That is the low dose level, that is called integral dose. So in general, conformal RT planning workflow goes like this, just for an idea for the people who doesn't know about radiation oncology uh, setup. So first what we do is the patient uh, positioning and immobilization using a mask that is thermoplastic mask. Then it, uh, a simulation scan will be done using a CT and the data is acquired into a system that is called treatment planning system. These images are uh, transferred into our contouring area where we do the target volume delineation. That means we map the areas which should be treated, we map the areas which should be avoided. From here, it is sent to the 3D model generation area and into the physics planning where the dose beams will be placed using computer algorithms either using a forward planning or an inverse planning. And finally, after achieving our target constants, it will be sent for the machine to treat the patient. So as these have evolved, how accurate are these systems? Uh, we can see non-invasive stereotactic frame. These are different frames which have been used uh, for uh, uh, using IMRT techniques. And uh, as, as this, you can see, there will be setup accuracy levels and there will be a small amount of error possibility. So this gives us with the pressure of the body fixed frame, the target volume will be underdosed. So you can see uh, some of the things which shows there may be underdosing some, which may be showing or uh, overdose to the uh, normal tissues. <clears throat> 